Hey everybody, welcome to Spate. So today we're looking at Spate, I'm going to do a, a little video, look at what it's all about. So Spate is a 2.5D platformer from IO, I think that's how you pronounce it, games. And it's available as of um, the 27th of March, I believe, on Steam. And um, this game was kickstarted way back in May 2012, and it's just been released as of this month. And um, it's like a 2.5D platformer, set in a steampunk world with a... A really unique kind of film noir type thing. It's kind of like a plat. If you made Dear Esther or Gone Home a platformer, that's kind of what it is, sort of. But we'll look at that in a second. I think we'll go on and we'll look at the um, the options menu first. So options menu. Not a lot going on. The game is um, a Unity game. So when you initially launch the game, you get the Unity launcher where you can select your resolution, your graphics options, where you get your kind of like beautiful, nice, fantastic, and so on and so forth. You can also set your controls. You can turn, um, which are fully rebindable. I should mention. Um, how do I get back out of this? Oh, game, you've foiled me. Exit, there we go, very good. And um, you can also turn subtitles on or off. I would suggest keeping them off, uh, which is the first complaint I've got. The, the, the subtitles when they're on kind of become quite um, intrusive because there's quite a lot of dialogue in the game. Because it follows that film noir type style where you get a lot of like narration like you would get in a film noir, um, it has a lot of subtitles which I think become quite intrusive. But otherwise, um, options menu is kind of what you would expect from a Unity game. You can watch the credits as well if you want. So we'll go play, and we're at 18% at the moment, slot 1, play. So, as I said, 2.5D platformer, it kind of reminds me of Limbo, which you'll see probably here. There's a lot of kind of like physics, not so much puzzles, but there's like gameplay elements that are physics based. Um, we can kind of walk around here and do some various things. So, we're um, a detective on the hunt for a, um, a lost man in this kind of like Area X type thing. It's like an island that's had some weird anomalous type things happen. And we've been sent here to locate this rich gentleman. Our character's like an alcoholic, kind of no family, daughter died, wife divorced. All these various kind of film noir type things. He drinks himself to oblivion with absinthe. You can actually take a drink. So when you drink, um, you can do some really wacky things. So you drink your absinthe, and it means you can jump really, really high. And that also comes into the gameplay. It's like another way to. As I made my way up the bridge, oh, hello. I could see that something wasn't right. It was the businessman's steamship. It was parked, running idle. I could see a slump form crumpled over a crate. You could tell the life had run out of him. We finished. I think we are. So yes, so the game has really good narration. The uh, voice actor that does the narrative stuff sounds like, um, I don't know, he sounds like Morgan Freeman and Christopher Walken's love child. He's got that kind of sound to him. I like the voice acting in it. It's very reminiscent of what you would... It's kind of like watching Shawshank Redemption. You've got like the kind of narrator's voice over the back and it's Morgan Freeman just telling the story. Um, we are the guy that's bopping about, of course. The character designs are pretty cool. He's got like really long, weird arms and like big hands and stuff. You'll see here as we kind of zoom in a bit better. There we go. We're wearing like a kind of hazard suit type thing, but with a hat on and we've got a jetpack so we can double jump and we've got various things that we can do. And the drinking, of course, will allow us to like distort the world and it means we can do big high jumps and things. Very cool. All, all very cool stuff. So the game plays kind of like Limbo, but without the advanced gameplay parts, I would say. It's more story driven than it is gameplay driven. Um, which is not to say that it's a bad thing, certainly, but um, if you're looking for similarities, I would say you're kind of looking sort of like a cross between Limbo and Gone Home. Which will probably deter a lot of people, because I know a lot of people aren't particularly fond of games games like Gone Home or Dear Esther. Um, I myself, I, I like them, I think they are games, not to get into that kind of discussion. I enjoy those types of games, so I like games with a, a strong narrative or with a good story. Doesn't always have to be gameplay that I'm interested in. Certainly, games can be a vessel for giving a story over. It doesn't need to be straight up gameplay at all times. But then again, you get games that I enjoy, like Nuclear Throne, which is all about gameplay and all about shooting stuff. But that, that's neither here nor there. So we found ourselves in a situation very steampunky looking. There's like a robot here who looks like he's wearing like a, a bucket you would take to the beach on his head. And we've got a dead guy here with a big top hat. So, us, Detective Bluth. Uh, robot, what happened here? All I know is that he shot himself. I saw it. Is that the truth? Sure. The robot's a nice enough fella and all, but there's something he's not telling me. It's very clear that this man did not kill himself. Hell, there ain't even a murder weapon nearby. This robot is hiding something. Hmm. That's what you're hiding, robot. So you're telling me this man killed himself? Yes, it's true. 
Robot, come on. Ah, you rascal. Look at you with your bucket in your head. It's clear that this man did not kill himself. Who did this to him? What does it matter? You solved the case. You should go now. Do you know a man in a tower? I'll get to that in a second. Um, <laughs> there's no man in that tower. Here, I can help you load this man into a boat so he can head back to the city. No thanks, robot. That doesn't smell right. Um, but you can leave now. The case is over. Sorry, buddy. i got to push on. So basically, th this robot or several or variants of the same robot, they keep showing up to tell me things. I think it is the same robot. I'm, I'm running awfully slow, which is weird. It's like I'm being dragged towards the, the robot. It's like it doesn't want me to go this way, which is unusual. Look at me. I'm, I'm fighting against the... Maybe it's the wind. Or maybe I pressed something. Hmm, interesting. Well, we should probably press on. So this guy is dead. I don't think we're right. Oh, there we go. We've got our speed back again. We should probably go this way. Uh, I've kind of backtracked a few times in the game. What is he doing? He was doing a weird thing with the sands there a little. Did you see that again? You're going to do that again, sunshine? No, he's not. I think he was slipping. Anyway, so the game is strong. I know what you're thinking. I already found the missing businessman. What the hell am I still doing in the X zone? It ain't exactly the happiest place on earth. The skinny of it is, is that I've got nothing to lose. And there are too many unanswered questions. Is there a man in the tower? Is he the one that killed the businessman? Why is he here? Could he be connected to all those disappearances ten years ago? Does this robot really love lamps? I wanted all these answers. And my flask was still half full, not half empty. So, as I was saying, <laughs> the game is very strongly narrative driven, and um, I'll find I'll probably be stumbling over the narrator. Uh, the narrator? The narrator, um, quite often as we go through this, because I won't know when he's going to say stuff. Um, I simply can't keep track of it every time that he speaks, because he speaks quite often. Now, this is a cool looking area. I'm going to take a sip of my absinthe and, and appreciate just all the weird shit that's going on. The game, I think the game looks fantastic. It's um, a Unity game, as I said, and it, and it has that kind of Unity lighting style. Unity has some of the best, like, lighting stuff that you see in, in, like, indie games at the moment. It's really, really cool. What is that down there? That's, like, castles and shit. Do I die? I do die. Okay. So, that's the, the first thing. Fail states are very, very, um... Oh, oh balls. Dead again. Fail states are very, um... Uh, very obvious. They, they come quickly, and then you can restart straight away, which is good. I should probably drink my absinthe so I can jump over there. Whoop! So I can do a big super jump, and then do I have to do a a limbo styly swingy swing? I think I do. There we go. Swing us over. Oh, hello, nurse, and up we go. There we go. I want to get into that castle, but it looks um, interesting. It also looks like it's separated, like like the top bits up there and the bottom bits in here. So we'll just bop over here as best as we can, and we'll proceed onwards, hoping to not um, fall down any holes and die again. I can. I feel like the narrator's going to start in a second. He's got something to say. I know he has. He's always got something. Oh, the lightning! So you see the. Is that a fish? Is that a big old fish? You sort of a big fish. I'm going to have some absinthe and see if he goes all wonky. Well, very um, very psychedelicy. So I, I really enjoy the fact that when you drink the absinthe, you can make the game go all wonky and weird. I also enjoy that all the stuff in the background has like kind of imagery and um, stuff going on. You sometimes see your daughter in the background, or you see like a big bastard fish or something like that. It's very interesting. Um, I'm not really sure at the moment which way the story's going. Here, in this hell on earth, this wretched rain, I wish my daughter was with me. She had a way of making everything brighter. She died some years back. I used to bring her here with my wife. Those were better days. Brighter days. It seems fitting now that the only thing I bring with me this time is a drink. It's all I have left, and it fits this vile place well. So to explain, the place hasn't always been like this. It's like an island that was engulfed in rain and fog, mist. And um, it slowly, like, the people that were here disappeared. And now it's just, like, a kind of weird anomalous, like, it's called Area X. It's got that kind of, like, stalker or roadside picnic vibe. Like, there's, like, a kind of cordoned off area that people aren't allowed to go to. Full of, like, physics anomalies and various things and just weird shit happening. People disappearing, people dying, people coming here to find answers and, and ask questions. Very cool stuff, very, it's, like, kind of, again, taking the film noir thing and taking the, the steampunk thing, and then adding like a sci-fi twist to it, which is kind of weird. I think I should probably run over the top. I'm, I'm nervous about this this thing. It's like a big log, but I don't trust it. 
I shouldn't trust it. Why should I trust it? It, it's, it looks scary. Can I crawl underneath it? No. Um, okay, yes I can, and I'm gonna fall and die. Oh, shit. Have a drink. Where am I going? Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> so, um, I think I experimented a little too far with that there. So you can clip through things as, as it was apart. I think because the game's, like, physics-based, it managed to, like, slip me under. There was another um, time when... I managed to, like, wedge myself on the side of a rock, like, perfectly holding myself by the, like, the, the rim of my hat, which was an interesting thing. Oh, balls. Can I go down here? I'm gonna go down here anyway. There should be something down here. I can! Well, I think I have to anyway, but... Can I swing from side to side? Maybe I'll bash into the... I love the way that the, the game looks, though. I do enjoy the art still. I like the lighting and the mist. A very, um... It's like a very common thing. Maybe I wasn't meant to fall down there. Nope, certainly not. Where's it going to spawn me? Oh, all the way back here. Indeed. Um, so it's a very common thing to find in film noir. Um, like mist and rain, like constant rain. If you've ever watched a film noir, like say for instance, take Blade Runner, the movie Blade Runner. I know there shouldn't be a, 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 a kind of lesson about movies and shit, but take Blade Runner. Blade Runner, it rains like all the time. And you can always see that kind of like mist and fog coming off the road when it's raining. It's got that kind of vibe to it as well, but it's got the steampunk aspect. It's like, kinda, I think the year it is, it's like 1880. And it's got all these like robots and like alternate history type shit going on. And I like that. Um, but... However, story aside, which this is a primary primary thing in this game is story, a lot of the... Hello? My daughter was a beauty, just like her mother. Hair as bright as the sun and eyes that sparkled like the blue of the sea. So yes, so as you've seen the daughter flash up. A lot of the um, gamey side of the game is not... I don't want to say that it's not enjoyable because it's not bad, it's just that it's not groundbreaking, so it's more of a case of coming for this for story, and primarily, primarily for story, um, as well as things like the, well, the graphics and the, the, the art are polished, certain things like you just seen back there where I clipped through the log, oh, you weird little girl, stop showing up in the background like that, please, makes me all nervous, the, uh, the, the gamey side of the game doesn't feel particularly polished, but the story side of it is really good, and it gives you, it, it leaves me feeling conflicted because I like the story and I like where it's going and I like what it's doing. So what are you seeing here? Press action button to control cannon, up, down to, 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 so. There we go. What am I doing? How'd I fire the bastard? Oh, hello nurse! Okay. We need to do one like this, but a big powerful one. Boom! Yes. We need to do another one. We just need to get... Now it's giving me a cannon, I feel slightly different about the gameplay side of things. Whenever you, whenever I'm presented with a cannon, things get slightly better. So, these physics type, um, not puzzles really, they're more like gameplay pieces. Um, they're pretty cool. Like, I, I'm not going to say they're bad. Uh, oh, that's a bad one. Maybe not, actually. Is it going to roll that way? I should probably send another one over just in case. There we go. Um, can I not go down here? Yes, I can! Is it going to flip back up? No, it's not. Oh, cannonball. I was hoping it would tear my leg off, but I'm clearly thinking too much into Oh, I, did, I stepped over that one. Now it's like a ball pen. Flip over here. Onwards to the rock. So, yeah, so the gameplay side of things is, is okay. It's not the greatest game known to man. Um, it's more like a, a game that you should be aware that you're buying into a story rather than a, a gamey game. I like that I've taken the absinthe and it's made everything go all kind of blue and weird. I enjoy that. So what's going on with this? Can I not, um... How... Why are you... Do I need to go for this, like this? Uh-huh. Right. Okay. And then I walk over here and it should hopefully bring the momentum that way. Momentum! Please! Oh! Let's do it. Come on now. Yes! I think that's what was meant to happen. I think I should just jump over here and just come over to this side. What is going on here? Okay, um, I'm not really sure. This, so we're getting more and more into the physics stuff. That's a circular saw. I know, they're bad. I'm gonna just jump over you. The fire! There's fire coming out of this thing, so it's getting a little more complex. But the, oh, balls. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's spikes! I don't like spikes, but there's fire down here. Oh, hello. <laughs> um, oh, dicks. Don't spikes. Oh, okay, we can jump right over it. There's a non-issue, we can avoid it. So these jumpy pads are pretty cool. 
So yeah, so it's mostly story. I, I wouldn't say the gameplay stuff is particularly inventive or inspiring, but it's still fun. Like, I'm still enjoying the game. Uh, it's just be aware of what you're buying into. Now, the game, in terms of cost, it's $10 or £6.99, £7, basically, for us UK and European types. And, um, yeah, I'd say Black it's a good... Blackouts are something I've gotten used to. It's the headaches that still surprise me with their spite. Is that you finished now, Christopher Walken? Okay, very good. So, the, the, the game is actually fun from a story perspective. The gameplay is alright, it's not the greatest game. If you're looking for more gameplay, kind of stuff of this similar vein, Limbo is of course the choice for you. Um, it's got the whole 2.5D perspective, it's got all the stuff in the background, it's all black and white and it's very sinister and scary. This has got different things, so we've now just jumped in a thing that's possibly going to fly. Nice. And I blew it up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is this like a flappy bird type situation? Hold, hold the it is. We're now doing flappy film noir. Nice. Can I take a drink while I'm doing this? Don't drink and drive. Whoa. See, I, this is why I enjoy it though. It's these little moments of like audio, visual, like just glorious stuff going on. And that's another thing, as you mentioned, the soundtrack is incredibly good. The music is. Um, Oftentimes really dark and ambient -y and uh, there's a lot of kind of film noir -y type film soundtrack -y stuff going on. A lot of the tracks actually sound like a band called Stars of the Lid. If you've ever heard of them, they make like drone and ambient music with like um, like cellos and guitars and things and they sound really, really big and, and not depressing but they sound bleak at times and then also quite hopeful. And I think the soundtrack captures the kind of vibe of the game very well. I should drink some more probably. In fact, let's just keep banging away at the old bottle here and we'll see how wacky we can get the thing to go. Oh, dear lord. This is bad. I, I have no idea what's going on. Oh, so this is what it's like driving drunk. Oh, oh, okay. Very nice. So we're actually progressing rather well in our little, like, boat thing. I mean, are we underwater or what? I don't even know what, what substance we're in. Are we in air or water or... What's going on up here? What are you fuckers doing? I don't know what they're doing. Oh, they've got balls! <laughs> they have balls! Oh, dicks. Up we go. Oh. And down we go. Can I stop here? Oh, no, okay, I just die horribly. I hope that's a check- Oh, it's a checkpoint! Okay. I'll take it. Right, drink some more sun. There you go. Oh! Oh! Oh, no. <laughs> the balls are scary. Up we go. Round we go. That was actually quite nice steering there, just slotting it through the gap. That's how we do. I should avoid this beach ball. Beach ball, cannonball, whatever. Can I, it's a ball anyway, we know it's a ball. So, so really, if you're into a more story-driven game, with gameplay, so it's more gameplay than, say, something like Dear Esther or, or Gone Home, but it's certainly not as, um, as gameplay as something like Limbo. It's like, again, a nice, um, cross between the two, but more heavily kind of laid towards the story end of things. If that's your kind of thing, then certainly check the game out. Um, I'll leave the link in the description below for it, and I'll try and not kill myself drink driving! <laughs>